Hi guys, in this video we're going to use uh, K-nearest neighbors algorithm, uh, KNN, to do classification prediction. The data set we're going to be looking at is inside R, so we don't need to import anything. It's the famous IRIS data set. If we look at its structure, we see that there's 150 examples, and each example here is going to represent a flower and there are five features that are recorded on each flower. So here they are. You see these are some uh, measurements on the sepal width and length and the petal width and length of the flowers as well as a categorization or classification of which species of flower um, the particular example is. So the choices of the species are setosa, versicolor, and due to just some space constraint we're not seeing the third feet, the third level but we know there are three levels of this species alright so we'll look into that first so what we basically want to be able to do is to build a model that's going to be able to predict which species a flower is based on knowing these features of that flower okay so we want to classify new flowers into one of these three uh, levels of species. Okay, so KNN is perfect for this. First, let's use the table function and see some more of the uh, species. So let, we can use the table. It'll also give us the frequency. So species. So we see here are the three levels, Setosa, Versica, and the third one that we weren't seeing due to space constraint here was Virginica. Okay? And we have 50 examples of each of them, which is a nice, very balanced data set. Okay? That's nice to have. All right? So what we will do first off is let's take another look at the data frame. So let's look at the first six observations just to get another view of the structure. We see here are the numerical features we were talking about here. First six examples here as well as the species which is our target. This is our target. Notice it's categorical or nominal and it's got three levels. So here's seems like the first six observations are um, all species setosa. I have an inkling that this data frame is organized um, into a kind of order of the species. <clears throat> now that, that won't do for us. So um, first thing I want to do before I go any further is to mix up the rows of this data frame so that I don't end up with this type of situation here where I have 50, it looks like there's going to be 50 setosas and we can be sure by just looking at the entire data set scrolling up and down. So let's scroll. We see that there's about 50 setosas in a row and then 50 versicolors and then 50 virginica. So it's nice and organized but for our purposes that's going to cause some problems. So what I want to do is I want to mix this entire data, the rows of this data set up so that it's a nice kind of, it's like uh, mixing a deck of cards, okay? So let's do that. So to do that, let's create a new variable called GP. And all, uh, actually, before we do that, we need to do something we've never seen before. We need to set seed. So I'll explain what this means. So, so we're going to set seed to 9850. So if you're following me, if you set your seed to 9850, you will uh, be able to produce the same exact results because what we're about to do is use our one of ours random number generators and this will help us to kind of uh, it's it's it serves as a way of mixing things up randomly like mixing a deck of cards but in computer um, terms we need a random number generator so first we set the seed so that every time I do this if I set the seed to 9850 I'll be able to get the same exact results. And now I created a, a variable called GP, just group maybe, and doesn't really matter what you call it. I'm going to use this function RUNIF, and what this does is it produces a random number from the uniform distribution. And so if I say, let's just see this working on its own, RUNIF 5, I'm telling it to 
to give me five random numbers between 0 and 1. So you see these five, these are five random numbers between 0 and 5. I need 150 random numbers between 0 and 1 because I have 150 rows in my data set. So I'm going to do runif. I could type 150 or I could use n row, which is, uh, is a function that counts how many rows there are. n row iris. So that's in effect typing 150. And I also want to assign a name to this, so GP. So if I look at GP now, you see I get I have 150 random numbers between 0 and 1. Now how am I what's this used for? What am I going to use this for? Well, my data frame was iris. Iris was too organized for my k nearest neighbors algorithm which I'm going to use. So I want to first mix up the rows. So to do this, I can rename iris as iris. Uh, you could call it iris2 if you like or just overwrite the previous iris and this one will take the order of GP so it'll put the rows in the order of that random those 150 random numbers I generated and keep all the columns so if I look at the structure of iris it hasn't changed it's still 150 rows five features and these are the same features but if we look at the first six observations, I would bet that there is a good mixture now. And you see here, now I have a good mixture. It looks like things got mixed up nice. Okay, I could even look at the first 10 and you'll see even a Virginica is here. Okay, so if you remember before I had a, I had a very homogenized kind of data frame. Alright, so now I have something to work with. So, uh, and since I called it iris, uh, just overwrote the original iris data frame for this present session that I'm in. Okay? So now that I have that, now I want to s do something that's uh, necessary when you're working with uh, the K KNN algorithm. And that is I want to rescale my numerical features. So let's look at the data frame again, you see my features here were all numerical. And KNN is great for dealing with numericals. In fact, it's, it's much easier to deal with numericals than it is to deal with nominal features. Even though, of course, the target here is always a nominal. Okay, We're talking about the other features. So if you notice something about these features, they look like they have different ranges. To check this, we can use a summary function and we can look at a summary of these four features. So one, two, three, and four. They're the first four. And let's just pay attention to the minimums and the maximums. So you see sepa length varies from 4.3 to 7.9. I'm guessing that's centimeters. SEPA width varies from 2 to 4.4, so quite a different range. Not dramatic, but quite different. Pedal width, 1 to 7, so a wider range. And pedal width has a very uh, narrower range than the other, other features. And the problem with these different ranges, although they're not too dramatic here, is that uh, the features with that have uh, larger values, generally speaking, will end up having an undue influence on the prediction of our classes, okay, and basically on our classification process. Because KNN uses a distance function, we want every feature that we use to be scaled uh, in a similar fashion. So one way to do that is to normalize them. And what normalization does is it basically takes each value, so take take the first value for sepal length. It subtracts the minimum and then divides by the maximum minus the minimum. And what that does in effect is it 
changes this range from 4.3 to 7.9 into 0 to 1. And we want all these to have the same range. That's one way to rescale. That's one popular way to rescale your features. Another way would be to standardize using uh, z-scores. Um, but we'll do normalization here. Okay. So I need to create a function that's going to do this. So I'm going to call this function normalize. I'm going to create this function. Um, don't get too uh, scared by what I'm doing here. You can pretty much copy this function and look into it as much as you like. But all this is going to do is uh, rescale and normalize my numerical features. Okay. So <clears throat> the return function. So I'm going to take each value, subtract its minimum then divide that by the maximum minus the minimum okay so I've defined a function normalize so if we could for example see this in action we can normalize a bunch of numbers like one two three four five so you see it changed this, the range was 1 to 5, obviously, and it rescaled it to 0 to 1, okay? And it retained a good amount of information as to the spacing, okay, the intervals. Let's also apply this to something that, like 10, 20, 30, 40, which has a much larger range, 10 to 50, that is, and let's see if it rescales it. 0 to 1. Okay? Now we want to apply this normalize function to sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width before we throw it into the KNN algorithm. Okay? So to do this, we want to do two things simultaneously. We want to get, we want to uh, we're going to create a new data frame in the process. So we don't want to overwrite what we have. Perhaps we'll call this iris underscore n for new maybe and I want to apply normalize to these four features because it wouldn't make sense to uh, normalize a categorical feature this is fine just as it is it's a factor already so I don't need to create make it a factor if it was a character I would separately need to create a factor out of this all right and that will be easy with the factor function okay but I'm focusing on these guys I want to normalize them okay that is column one, two, three, and four. So I want to apply normalize to those four columns. All right, I, I'm giving it a new name so I don't overwrite the previous. So just, I want this to be a data frame. So I use L apply. <coughs> L apply is, stands for list apply, I believe. And we're going to apply this to iris all the rows and only to columns one two three and four and what is it that we're going to apply we're going to apply the normalize function close parentheses close parentheses enter we should be good we can take a look at the structure of iris new we see that it's got 150 examples except now there's only four features because i didn't request that fifth feature species to be included and here are the names we recognize these and you notice these numbers slightly changed in fact just to get a quick check let's do a summary of this new the new normalized features that we just created so iris underscore n and we see that the minimums are all zero the maximums are all one so I, in effect, normalized my numerical features. Okay, so this is some pre-processing for the KNN algorithm. All right, in the next video, I'm gonna take what I've done so far and create a training data set and a separate test data set. Okay, and that's gonna help us to kind of assess our model and see how well it performed at the very end. All right, so thanks for watching. Make sure to watch part two and the continuation of this.